we all have things in our life that we get a lot of use from. So it could be something like your car, it could be maybe particular rooms in your house, maybe your television. Whatever it happens to be, we can measure how much value we get by how much we use it. And for us, one of the areas we get a lot of value from is our garage gym. So we've had our garage gym set up for about seven years now. So we've been in this house for eight years and seven years ago, we decided to kiss it out. Rather than pay for a gym membership each month, I felt like I'd be more likely to go into the gym if it's just outside the house. And also, the amount of money it costs to invest in a garage gym is actually cheaper than paying for a monthly gym subscription year after year. Of course, over the first few years of that seven years, the gym didn't get very much use at all, as for a lot of people. You put something in place with good intentions and you actually don't really follow through as much as you thought you might. But over the last three and a half years, the gym has gained more and more use. We've made small little upgrades here and there, including getting a new stationary bike, which we found gave us better value and better use than the previous bike we had. And also over the course of time, there've been a few minor upgrades with a few dumbbells and other little accessories. So recently we decided to overhaul a few things in the house and decided that the gym was one of those things that we were going to upgrade. But before we take a look at what we've done, let's take a look at how it was. So this is the garage gym before we started our upgrades and it's pretty well specced out. It's got a lot of the essential equipment we need for some training on the bike and weight training in the garage. So as we walk through, we've got things like the battle ropes, We've got the Schwinn IC8 bike, which connects up to Peloton. We've got a few of the dumbbells, which are adjustable. These ones go up to 24 kilos. We've got our barbells on the wall there. So we've got a football style bar, a regular barbell, a training barbell, and an easy curl bar. And then we've also got a few of the elastic bands to help us. And the key piece is the bench, and the rack to work with. And also on the back wall, we've got the cable attachments. So this rack actually has a cable attachment on it. The cable attachment just sits on the back of the rack and you just load it up with your weight plates down at the bottom and do your work. It's got a high and a low pulley and it connects directly to the rest of the frame, which is orange, but as you can see, was painted with a very, very poor paint job by myself. And then finally, we've got an area for our medicine balls and wall balls and a 30 kilo slam ball. So things like the main barbell are a fairly cheap and generic model. I think it cost me about hundred pounds. So what we're gonna be doing is looking at improving some of this kit and adding some upgrades to give us better functionality, better quality and longevity in the things that we want to use. So the gym itself had a really great setup and actually overall it hasn't changed that much since then as far as the availability of equipment and the types of things we have overall. But some of the changes we have made have been quite significant for the usage and the value we get from it. So the first thing we did, which was actually the driving force for a lot of rethinking of the gym, was we changed the garage door. So we started with your classic up and over garage door, which made loads of creaks and squeaks every time you opened it and we invested in getting a barn door style. So we can open up just one of the doors to get in and out. It's much more convenient, much quieter, and a setup I've been looking to put in place for a little while now. Now, of course, by changing the garage door, that meant that I didn't have a bunch of the framework that was holding the up and over door in place, which meant that I was able to rethink the entire garage and work out what layout was gonna work best for us. And the interesting thing was, although I started out with one particular plan before I began the project, actually a few things came along the way, which meant that I had to change a lot of what I was working on. So let's take a look at some of the new stuff we got. So first of all, that old badly painted rack we decided to change. This new one is heavier duty. It's got built-in weight stacks for the cable machines, which is much more convenient than having to put weight plates on it. It's got the same high and low pulleys for the cables that the old one had, but these ones move a lot smoother through their range of motion. And also the key thing for me and the reason why I wanted to upgrade the rack in the first place is we now have a cable crossover, which means we have some front mounted cable areas to allow me to do some additional moves that I couldn't do before. Now, of course, if you're upgrading the rack, then you really need to upgrade the bench while you're there too. 
And the last one did bother me because it was on a slight angle for some reason. The framework of it wasn't quite square. So it was quite nice to be able to upgrade that bench too to a heavier duty one also. And the one I chose happened to give me the option of having attachments for bicep curls and leg curls and extensions. And that was one thing I was missing, some dedicated equipment for working my legs, which really do need the work. So having that on the bench is really good for the work I'm trying to get done. And of course, if we're gonna change some of the big stuff, then we need to add to some of the smaller stuff. Now, I didn't really need to get rid of anything because most of the things I had were of decent quality, but there are some that I wanted to upgrade. So for example, I picked up two new barbells from Rogue Fitness. So the 20 kilo Olympic bar, and also we picked up a curl bar. Now the old curl bar I had used to make squeaks and creaks every time you were using it because it was very cheap. So this one now moves very smoothly, very quiet, and has a lot more quality about it. And also I decided to pick up some chains which attach to a barbell. And the reason for this is they give you something different to just sticking on a weight plate. So when you've got the bar down low, it means that some of the chain is sitting on the floor, which means that you're not bearing the weight on the bar. And then as you lift the bar up, it then takes more of the weight of those chains as they lift off the floor, which means that you get a different dynamic, a different progressive workout, so that things are sometimes easier at the hardest part of a lift. So squats, for example, it's much harder to get yourself out of a deep squat than it is when you're halfway up. So by having less weight on your shoulders at the bottom part of a squat means that you can get yourself up, but then as you're heading up, the work gets harder and your legs are getting a real good workout all the way through. Now, of course, if I'm gonna upgrade bars and get chains, then I also wanted to get some additional weight plates. So previously, the weight plates I had were just standard Olympic plates that you can pick up, but I really wanted to get some bumper plates. So bumper plates are an industry standard diameter, which means that it puts the weights at a perfect height for deadlifts. And also it means if you're lifting heavier weight and you want to drop it at the end of a move, then you can do that because the bumper plates are built to handle that kind of impact. So I've got myself a full set of bumper plates and also I even managed to do some woodwork to build a storage rack for them. So the other issue I had in the garage was I had two sets of adjustable dumbbells. So the problem with adjustable weights is that they have fixed increments you can set them to, which means that sometimes you might wanna go in between weights, but you can't do that. So with the two sets I had, it meant that some of the gaps I had in one were filled by the other, but they weren't quite meeting all the criteria I was looking for. And also the highest weight I could go to on my heavier set wasn't quite heavy enough for some of the moves. So I decided to invest in another adjustable dumbbell, which filled some of the gaps that the other ones didn't cover, and also went up to a heavier weight than I had before. Now in an ideal world, I'd have a full set of individual dumbbells for each weight, but it takes up a lot of space, and it's not the kind of space that I have at the moment to use in the gym. When I've got lots of other things, I need to consider at the same time. And the final addition we put into the gym was a plyometric box. So you'll see these things at a lot of CrossFit gyms and a lot of functional training. And like the chains, I wanted to add a little bit of diversity to some of the training we're able to do. So the great thing about the box is that you can do box jumps, you can do step up, step overs, and various bits of work that work your legs in a different way to classic weightlifting motion. And the great thing about a plyometric box is it's built where you can lay it down in different ways and it's got three different heights available to it depending which way around you lay it. So it's a great addition to the gym and actually was the final thing we decided to add. So of course with these additions, that meant that I had to rejig the layout of the gym. And also we got some bicycles recently which we didn't have in the gym before. So that meant that I had to rethink the entire storage system that we had in the garage. So as I mentioned earlier, because we changed the garage door and the framework which was holding the door as it went into the garage disappeared, it meant that we could actually work entirely to the ceiling at the front end of the garage. So I was able to put in some high shelving, which meant that those things we don't really use that often, like old paint and some of my power tools, they could go high up where they're not being used for the most part, and then when I need them, I can get to them. And by putting things up high, it also meant that the space I needed to take up for your classic rack shelving was minimized to just one rack rather than the two or three that I had before. And that's everything we've done. And I'm really, really happy with the results. It was a long time coming and definitely was a lot of work to try and make everything fit, whilst also giving us space to be able to do the work we wanted to do in the gym. But it's incredible to have that end result in place for us to be able to use. Also, it's now quieter to get in and out of the gym. So if one of us goes out early in the morning, we're not disturbing the whole house by having the creak 
of the old garage door opening and closing. And we have more kit that allows us to get the work done that we're looking to achieve. And finally, it was really nice to be able to approach the gym from a fresh start almost. So over the course of the last seven years with the gym, things have evolved a little bit. We've picked up the odd bit of equipment here and there, but we've never really fundamentally looked at what we want and how we want it to be because you end up with things coming in and out over the course of time and there's no real prompt to make massive adjustments to what you've got. So it was really excellent to start afresh, to work out what I really wanted to put in place and then to gradually piece that together. So that's it, that's our garage gym, that's what we work in each day, that's where we go and get our training done. And maybe it's worth you having a look at what you use often and whether it's worth an upgrade.